What's up guys, it's AU5. Today I want to talk about a plugin called Spectral Compressor. It is free and open source and incredibly powerful to the point where I do not think it should be free. It is developed by a guy named Robert Vanderhelm who you can find on GitHub. It is part of a plugin bundle that he developed. It has some other cool plugins in it, but this one really takes the cake as being something ridiculously powerful. It is advertised as a 16,000 band OTT because it can do downwards and upwards compression at extreme ratios with a variable FFT buffer between 64 and like 32,000 bands or 32,000 bins technically. All of the technical stuff aside, I've found new uses for this that I don't think it was intended for and basically found that it can replace about $600 worth of plugins. So for instance, it can do Soothe, it can be a linear phase filter, it can be a spectral morph, it can also do lossy data compression artifacting, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other things that I am going to cover and things that I probably haven't discovered yet. All right, I'm going to get into it. Check this out. Okay, before we get started, I just want to say because this is an open source plugin, you're going to need to disable some firewall stuff on Windows when you install it, as well as disable Gatekeeper on Mac. Links in the description to show you how to do that. So I'm going to put Spectral Compressor on this demo song that I have here, and this is what the interface looks like. Here's how it sounds without any processing. As you can see, there is an analyzer, we have your controls on the left side, and you also have this threshold control. It's pretty much like a, any typical compressor. You have your ratio, and you have your threshold, and you have your attack and release times. So if I start increasing the ratio, automatically you're going to start some hear, hearing some gain reduction. And you can also see it. I can adjust the threshold level. And you can hear that a lot of the lows are being compressed. I can also adjust the attack and release times. So it's a lot more gentle or a lot more aggressive. Um, I can set the ratio to something below 500 if I want to. There's also an upwards ratio, which boosts the amplitude of frequencies that go below the threshold. The cool thing about Spectral Compressor is it has a, some extra features such as threshold slope. So let's say I want to compress the highs more than the lows. Easy. Um, there's also window size because this is FFT based. You can kind of think of each one of these bins as frequency bands. And you can get very, very high and precise. It also has a threshold curve control, so I can compress the highs and lows more or vice versa. And then use the threshold center to kind of target where I want the compression to be. There's also the knee, just like a typical compressor. There's also a high frequency roll off too. Um, but we'll get more into that and the modes later. So that's kind of what its intended purpose was for mixing and you know, for some sound design. But I want to show you some stuff that I discovered. Spectral DSing. I have this acapella from my song Inflex. We fly so high through moonlit sky. And it's a little sibilant right around like the 8 to 10k area. So if I throw a spectral compressor on it, I can utilize the threshold curve and threshold center controls. We fly so high through moonlit sky and turn the tide beneath And really hone in on that frequency range. Just you and I inflex the light. It decrease the we attack time. So high through moonlit sky and turn the tide beneath you. Use some pretty extreme DSing. You and I inflex the light that shines so bright within you. So maybe this can replace Soothe in a lot of cases. Linear phase EQ. Next thing that I find is really cool is uh, you can create a linear phase EQ with an already existing EQ that you have. So here is the serum patch with some pretty heavy low pass automation doing this uh, articulation on this bass line.
And as you can see in the frequency spectrum, this low pass filter, when it is sweeping down very quickly, will introduce a pretty noticeable phase shift that shows up audibly as a kind of detuning or like pitching down. That's actually not in the patch, but you can see the low frequencies kind of pitching down. And that's the result of this not being a linear phase filter. But how we can turn this into a linear phase filter is simply by creating an effects rack, putting spectral compressor on another chain, and then setting the side chain input of that to the track that you're on and to the EQ chain. So I'm going to do post effects and then I'm going to mute this EQ chain. Now if I go into spectral compressor and set the mode to sidechain matching, turn the attack and release all the way down, turn the ratio for the upwards and downwards all the way up. I'm also going to reduce this high frequency roll off and just set the knees to zero. Now, oh yeah, I'm also going to set my threshold to like zero. This is basically an identical curve of my EQ. And listen, no phase shift. Here's with the typical EQ. And here it is with the spectral compressor, turning it into a linear phase EQ. If we have two sounds, such as this serum patch here, and this chord. So let's say I want to use this chordal spectrum and imprint that onto the serum. Uh, I can do that by putting a spectral compressor onto the serum, setting the sidechain input to the track that I'm on again, and then to the chord rack post effects. And then if I set the mode to sidechain compression, turn the ratio up and the threshold down. This is basically filtering out all the frequencies that are present in the chord. Now, I want the opposite of that. So what I'm going to do is create a new chain and then throw a utility onto the blank chain and then invert the polarity of the dry signal. So now it is going to basically create a delta signal. And what you will get through is the sound of the chord. I could adjust the threshold. It's kind of like a subtractive chordal intensity knob. Spectral morph. Here's a, another similar effect of that. I'm going to use the instrument stem for my song Escape. And I want to morph it with the acapella from the same song. We'll find a way to break free from the past we left in time. And yes, that is me singing for anyone who is wondering. So I'm going to put spectral compressor onto the synths and then set the sidechain input to the escape vocals. And now instead of using sidechain compression, I'm going to use sidechain matching. And now this is going to match the amplitudes of the frequencies in this vocal acapella. If I turn the ratio of the downwards all the way up and the upwards all the way up, then we can actually get an effect of spectral morphing. I'm going to turn the attack and release down. And adjust the window size. You can also turn the threshold up. That's pretty cool. Here is my song Infinite Wings and the drop of my song Escape. And let's say I want to morph these together. Let's see how this sounds. So 
You're basically preserving the tonal characteristics of Infinite Wings, but impressing the textural and rhythmic characteristics of Escape onto it. Spectral Clipper. I'm going to use the bass stem from my song with Prismatic, Quantum Level. This is a pretty simple effect, but it's really powerful. If I turn the attack and release times all the way down, turn the window overlap down, turn the window size bit down, and then just crank the ratio of the downwards and cut the knee, I can use the threshold as a spectral clipper. And this is really cool, it's kind of like a new kind of distortion. The difference between this and regular clipping is that there is no intermodulation distortion going on because it is distorting each individual band separately and there's no interference from adjacent bands. So it's a really cool effect in my opinion. And when you change the window size to something larger, you get these really cool textural effects. I mean, that sounds ridiculous. Spectral gating. I also want to demonstrate if you use spectral compressor in the same way, basically clipping it, and then create a delta chain by using a utility and reversing the polarity. You get this really cool spectral gate effect. It's very similar to something like lossy or some lossy data compression algorithm. And in conjunction with a threshold curve, you can get this really cool, super band limited kind of digital transmission effect that I really like. So yeah, that's just a few things that you can do with this free plugin spectral compressor. So I just want to say a disclaimer, just because spectral compressor can do a lot of these cool tricks and effects that these other paid plugins can do does not actually replace the paid plugin in a lot of other circumstances. I still love Soothe, I still love Morph, just to name a few. I want to give a quick shout out to Derpcat for actually turning me on to this plugin several months ago and also to the developer Robert Vanderhelm for creating something so powerful and also free and open source. So thank you guys. And if you like tutorials like this where I am exploiting plugins for uses other than their intended purposes, I highly recommend checking out my masterclass called The School of Bass. The School of Bass is a sound design course with over 30 hours of content where I am showing you how I create numerous sounds that you hear in my songs with various synths and stock plugins, uh, as well as song walkthroughs and my process for getting unlimited sounds and thinking like an engineer, thinking outside the box. So if you're interested in that, I guarantee that you'll learn a lot from it. Check it out, School of Bass, link in the description. With that said, I'll see you next time. Peace.